So we've talked about your pelvis dropping, we've talked about it tilting and swaying. Now we're actually going to talk about it locking and you, particularly your sacroiliac joint locking. So when you're walking and when you're running, we need a mobile sacroiliac joint. So what that means is we need space between your sacrum and your ilium here so that you can actually rotate your pelvis. So if I'm gonna lift this leg up, I'm gonna to have to rotate this pelvis backwards. And if I'm gonna pull my leg behind me, I'm gonna to have to rotate it forwards. This needs to be unlocked, still stable, but unlocked in order for us to create the movement that we need when we're running and jumping and changing directions. Now, if you're gonna lift a really heavy weight, well then you're gonna want the opposite. You're gonna want this sacrum to completely lock and stabilize so that it doesn't have any movement in it so it can stay nice and safe because the sacrum is the base of your spine and obviously you want a nice stable spine when you're lifting a really heavy object. The issue in osteitis pubis comes because of the lack of core strength and the overpronation. Essentially, all the OP mechanics create a situation where your pelvis becomes unstable and your body doesn't have the faith in your pelvis to be able to remain stable whilst the joint's unlocked. It's basically going to itself, if I remain unlocked and this pelvis is unstable, I'm gonna really injure my spine and my back. So we're gonna lock and we're gonna remain locked. And for most OP patients, they have a locked and immobile sacroiliac joint. Now this becomes a really big issue because when you're walking and when you're running now, you don't have the mobility to actually perform those actions. So your body now has to engage in a heap of compensation patterns to make up for them. So your hips are gonna twist, they're gonna tilt, they're gonna sway. They're gonna do everything that they can to try and create that mobility that is missing because you can no longer do this. And so a lot of the hip drop, a lot of the anterior pelvic sway, the anterior pelvic tilt, these things are in a lot of large part are being caused by the fact that your sacrum is locked and it really lends itself to how all the OP mechanics are completely intertwined and how you can't try and fix one and expect to correct all of them. You need to fix them all at once by engaging in whole body functional rehab. Now, just to touch on, obviously, if your pelvis is twisting and it's dipping and you're creating all these shifts, your adductors, which are attaching to the front here, they're getting yanked along for the ride. And as we know, OP is caused by overworked adductors. So every time you're moving and you're twisting, you're yanking at it, you're pulling at it, you're stretching it, you're tethering it, you're overworking it. And every time it engages and braces to compensate for these compensation patterns to try and make up for them and protect you from them, they're obviously getting weaker, tighter, more dysfunctional, and eventually they're developing osteitis pubis. And that is why a locked sacroiliac joint is such a dangerous thing for OP.